Scientists have built a massive machine that sucks carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. Here's what you need to know. The world's largest carbon capture plant has opened in Iceland and its manufacturers say it will capture 4,000 tons of carbon dioxide from the air per year. Its fans draw air towards a filter, which carbon dioxide particles stick to. Once enough particles are captured, the temperature inside is raised, which releases the carbon dioxide from the filter so the now highly concentrated gas can be collected. The carbon dioxide is then mixed with water and injected deep into the ground, where it can be stored safely without affecting the Earth's climate. The device represents one kind of geoengineering, a name for human attempts to adjust our climate through interventions, according to The Guardian. But as the world's ice sheets melt due to climate change, there are also other, far more literal attempts to tackle the problem. Various projects attempting to refreeze some of the world's ice are ongoing, with a 2019 study published in Science Advances proposing the use of 12,000 wind turbines to pump seawater to the surface, then turn it into artificial snow, and then pump it onto two glaciers on the west and Arctic coast. At the time, study co-author Anders Leverman said it would take 7.4 trillion tons of snow over a 10-year period to result in a 2-centimeter drop in sea level, though the artificial snow would weigh the glaciers down and improve stability. Other research suggests warm water currents may be melting the glaciers from the bottom up, prompting an idea to construct a giant sills or underwater mounds to prevent the water from seeping under the ice shelves. CNBC reported around the same time that Arizona State University physicist Stephen Desch has similar refreezing plans for the Arctic. His Arctic ice management strategy called for the use of wind-powered pumps to spray water to the surface of sea ice, where it would freeze and thicken the ice cap. All of these inventions and propositions are dealing with the reality presented in this year's IPCC report, which stated that the world is currently set to go past the 2 degrees Celsius warming target set out by 197 countries in the 2015 Paris Agreement. Going over 2 degrees will see far worse heat waves, droughts, and flood-inducing downpours, according to the report, which adds that huge damage has also already been done. Extremes such as heat waves, droughts, floods, and storms have become more prevalent, while tropical cyclones are becoming stronger and wetter, Arctic sea ice is dwindling this summer, and permafrost is thawing. The world is locked in to 15 to 30 centimeters or 6 to 12 inches of sea level rise by 2050, according to report co-author Bob Kopp of Rutgers University, who spoke to the Associated Press. That report ultimately concludes that we can limit human-induced global warming by limiting cumulative carbon dioxide emissions and reaching at least net-zero carbon dioxide emissions, along with making strong reductions in other greenhouse gas emissions. However, maybe geoengineering is worth a try, too. According to The Guardian, critics say the technology is prohibitively expensive and might take decades to operate at scale, but proponents say these technologies can become a major tool in the fight against climate change. For Orca's part, the 4,000-ton figure from the team behind it would, according to the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, cited by Science Alert, equate to the emissions from about 870 cars. And we're hardly in a position to be too choosy right now, are we? An Iranian architect has shared a design that aims to protect penguins and control the melting of polar ice in Antarctica. Sajad Navidi's penguin protection system consists of two components, a warming igloo above the surface and an underwater section powered by a pendulum that cools the sea ice penguins need for safety and breeding. The concept was conceived as part of a competition launched by French organization Fondation Jacques Rougerie and ranked 7th among the top 12 projects of the Innovation for the Sea category, according to a report in Design Boom. The igloo provides a safe enclosure for penguins to live and lay eggs. The igloo was, according to Navidi, in inspired by the way penguins huddle to keep themselves warm. The lower portion is a porous space inspired by sea sponges. The pendulum is moved by waves and generates electricity for a fan that pulls cold water up to the surface. The lower portion is independent of the igloo and can detect ice shelves that need to be cooled, automatically detaching to move toward areas of melting sea ice. The Independent newspaper reports that the Pentagon has been using its secretive X-37B space plane to test a solar panel that could one day beam electricity to Earth. The Photovoltaic Radio Frequency Antenna Module, or PRAM for short, is currently the size of a pizza box, but the technology could be scaled up in order to send massive amounts of clean and renewable energy to Earth via microwaves, possibly even enough energy to power whole cities. The test panel was launched into orbit last year aboard the space plane. 
It absorbs blue light energy from sunlight that cannot pass through the Earth's atmosphere. This means it's able to harness solar energy much more effectively than terrestrial setups. The test panel is only capable of capturing and transmitting around 10 watts of energy back to Earth, enough to power a phone or tablet. However, if the system scales up successfully, the technology could deliver significant amounts of power to remote regions of the globe, as well as provide electricity during natural disasters and emergencies. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.